Hi everyone, welcome back to the processes in the project management body of knowledge. This one in particular we're looking at is determining the actual budget itself. And as you can see, we've been on our journey of planning our project. You know, we've started with our project charter, we've found our project stakeholders, then we've developed our project management plan in our planning process group up here, and we've planned the scope, we've planned the schedule. Now that we've planned the scope and the schedule, we're, we're looking into how much it will cost. So how much will our project cost? Is it feasible for us to complete it within the budget that we've assigned? So planning cost management, we've estimated our costs and, and now it's time for us to determine the budget itself. Determining the budget is the process of aggregating the estimated costs of individual activities or work packages to establish an authorized cost baseline. This is where we're actually creating that cost baseline itself and that's going to be locked in place at a certain point in time. If we need to change that in the future, once it's locked in, we need to go through a change request through perform integrated change control, that process if you remember. So we do this because it determines the cost baseline against which project performance can be monitored and controlled. So once it's locked in place, then obviously if it's going off track or if it's you know staying on track, wherever it's going, we can, we can monitor that progress and we can bring it back to where we need it to be inputs, tools and techniques and outputs for determining the budget. We've got the project management plan as always and different parts of the project management plan, project documents, the business documents such as the business case and business management plan, benefits management plan. So what are the benefits? How are we realizing those? How are we measuring those? Agreements that have been made, enterprise environmental factors and organizational process assets and templates and that sort of thing. Tools and techniques you'll see as always, our expert judgment, again, our favorite. Cost aggregation, data analysis, historical information review, funding limit reconciliation, where we're reconciling the budget against items that we've paid for or that has, have been spent, and financing the project as well, based on the budget itself. Outputs, we've got the cost baseline against which we measure the entire project. Project funding requirements. And project documents updates like cost estimates, the project schedule might need to be updated, and the risk register as well. As you can see, determining the budget has that input into the project management plan. So we're putting that information back into the information into the project management plan. It, we gather information from the project management plan and it goes back into the project management plan as we update it as well. Then we're controlling those costs over time if things go off track or if we just need to, to make changes, make preventative actions or even fix defects as they appear. And then obviously we're putting back information into the project doc documents as well. So cost estimates and the risk register updating those items. We might need procurements as an input. So procurements, if we're paying someone to do work for us or a part of our project, then that will definitely have an impact on our budget. And then business documents, EEFs and OPAs as always, and project documents as well. Let's look at the inputs in more detail. We've got the project management plan. So the cost management plan, this is our process for how we're going about to managing uh, the cost management plan and, and the cost within our project. So what are the tools we're using? What, what is the framework we're using? Who's involved? And you know, this is the process that we're, that we're able to go to. It's our guideline. The resource management plan. So who is doing the work? What is the cost for that? What time frame are they needed for? All of those items for our resources to complete our project work. And of course, the scope baseline is an input because we're wanting to know what we are delivering. So that is going to impact the resources. And of course, the cost management plan is going to impact all of this as well in how we manage the whole process. Project documents are an input as well. We've got the basis of our estimates. We've got the cost estimates themselves that we've already been through, through our estimating techniques, if you remember, analogous techniques, parametric techniques for estimating the costs involved. The project schedule itself, how long are we going to be needing these resources for? That's going to determine the money involved also. And of course, our risk register, 
Do we need to avoid certain risks? Are there any additional risks that we need to call out? Are there any cost-based risks? You know, maybe money fluctuations or hedging required. Maybe certain, uh, you know, country differences where there are different, uh, different methods for doing the work. Maybe certain organizational requirements for, for things that need to be done. Unions or, you know, certain people, certain hours that are required. All of this will be an input for determining the budget. Business documents. We've got the business case, which is our very first document, our feasibility study. Was it uh, okay to proceed with this project in the first place? That turns into the project charter and that turns into the project management plan. And that shows us our initial high level costs. So what did we actually think that this was going to cost in the first place? And benefits management plan. What are the benefits that we were trying to realize? And, and you know, what was the time frame for those to happen? How are we measuring those? Those are the benefits that we need to know that will impact the costs that we're able to spend sometimes as well. Agreements that have been made. So this might be relating to costs, to products, services or results that will be purchased and they're included when determining the budget. Enterprise environmental factors, um, that could be exchange rates. So big environmental or market forces for large scale projects that extend multiple years with multiple currencies, this could be a big risk. There are fluctuations of currencies and they need to be understood and built into the budget process. Organizational process assets or templates. This could include formal and informal cost budgeting related policies within the organization you're working in. Any procedures, any guidelines, always be aware of these. Where are they coming from? The project management office itself, maybe the functional management area, uh, and or maybe there are no templates at all and you have to make your own or bring some across. So that's important to know. Historical information and lessons learned. Have we le learned any lessons in regards to budgeting uh, or things that might change or blow out over time? Very important to know. And cost budgeting tools that we might use and reporting methods that are in place. So how are we reporting on the budget um, and on the benefits that we're gathering after everything goes in place? Tools and techniques that we'll see are our favorite, of course, expert judgment. We're always, as project managers, needing to gather that expert judgment from the people in their areas of expertise. That's a really big part of that role. And expertise should be considered from individuals or groups with specialized knowledge in similar projects, uh, information on the discipline or the application area. So what sort of project we're delivering, the deliverables themselves, maybe we need that expertise and financial principles. So accounting principles, uh, again, those the currency fluctuations or hedges, we may need expertise from people in those areas and funding requirement and requirements and sources. So where is the money coming from? Who do we need to speak to? What is the process within our organization or even external to our organization that we need to go through to gather that funding for this particular project? Cost aggregation we'll also use as a tool and technique. These are, uh, cost estimates are aggregated by work packages in accordance with the work breakdown structure. So as you know, we've got that high level feature. We break it down into smaller work packages that a team can work on. And now the work package cost estimates are aggregated for the higher component levels of the work breakdown structure, such as control accounts. So if someone is, is cost estimating on these smaller work packages, the experts doing the work are showing how much that will cost. All of this is aggregated and it feeds back into that high level estimate. So now we just have one figure instead of, you know, lots of different figures down here. And that becomes a really big part of our budget, potentially the budget itself. Data analysis is also a tool and technique that we'll use. And that can include reserve analysis, which can establish the management reserves for the project. Doing reserve analysis, so where, as you've probably seen, but management reserves, that's the amount of project budget uh, and it's additional to the cost baseline. So if we've got all of our if we've got all of our work packages, our team has estimated on those, those go into the work, into the cost baseline overall, as we saw, so they're aggregated. And then we add a little bit on top of that. And that is our management reserve. And that's reserved for unforeseen risks that might come up. So things that we just have not thought of. All of a sudden, something comes out of the blue, 
but we have a little bit extra and we can use that towards any of those risks that do appear. Historical information overview. So res reviewing historical information can assist in developing parametric estimates or even analogous estimates. Very important and we've been through both of those. Both the cost and accuracy of analogous and parametric models can vary widely. As we know, analogous is, uh, if it's similar, if we're just using a similar approach to another project, it's very quick, but it might not be very accurate. So it's just, a, it's just a sort of finger in the air, it's an estimate. Um, parametric, we might have a better idea because it might be a specific dollar per, you know, per meter, for example, or dollar per hour, or whatever that is. That's a little bit more accurate. Now, historical information can be used to develop the model and make sure that it's accurate. And parameters used in the model are readily quantifiable. We also want, so we wanna make sure that they are correct make sure that we can check them, make sure they're correct. And the models should be scalable. So they work for large projects, small projects, and within the phases of a project. And this is usually with the parametric estimating, uh, someone will be doing that for those lower level work package cost estimates, as we saw that then get aggregated up into the high level estimate itself for the overall feature potentially. Funding limit reconciliation. So the expenditure of funds should be reconciled with any funding limits on the commitment of funds for the project. So do we have $100,000 altogether? And as we're spending money on each phase or on each uh, iteration, for example, or at each milestone, then that needs to be reconciled against the total budget. We're taking it off the total budget. Now it's, maybe it's, 10,000 every time, and we just need to make sure that that has been captured correctly. So this is accomplished by placing imposed date constraints, like milestones, for work into the project schedule. And we're saying, look, here's the amount that we've spend, spent, and now we are taking that off the budget so that we know where we're up to. Financing is a big tool and technique as well. Financing entails acquiring funding for the project itself. How are we getting this money? Where is it coming from? It's common for long-term infrastructure, industrial and public services projects to seek external sources of funds. So maybe we're getting funding from the public. Maybe we're getting funding from the government. Maybe we're getting funding from shareholders. But within an organization, um, we might be getting funding from a, part, like a certain functional area. We might be getting funding from the project management office. We might be getting funding from, you know, from other parts within the organization. We need to know where this is coming from and how to go about it. The funding entity may have certain requirements that are required to be met and we need to be aware of those so that we can make it all happen. Outputs for determining the budget. The cost baseline itself. Now this is that baseline cost document and now it's locked in place and if we want to change it, or if we need to bring it back on track, for example, then we will usually need to go through a change request so that everyone is on the same page and everyone understands what is happening. So the cost baseline is the approved version of the time phased project budget. As you can see, we've got time over here and we've got the cumulative val uh, cost of what we're spending. So this is our time based budget. So we're spending a little bit here, spending a little bit here, spending a little bit here, and our funding requirements, this is uh, where we're needing more funding, more funding, and oh, here at the top, we've actually reached our budget at completion, and now we need to dip into our management reserves for any unforeseen work that we hadn't come across. So we didn't think that we'd go into that management reserve, but now we have to, and that ends up with a little bit extra on our project budget there. So now it can only be changed through formal change control procedures, as we said, and it's used as a basis for comparison to the actual results as they happen. The cost baseline is developed as a summation of the approved budgets, all of the different approved budgets uh, for all of the different scheduled activities. Outputs also, we've got the funding requirements, the project funding requirements. So periodic funding requirements may be involved as well, as we've seen. Are they quarterly? Are they annually? Are they monthly? And they're derived from the cost baseline. The cost baseline will include projected expenditures. How much are we projecting to spend in the future? And, uh, and it may not be evenly dis distributed. So we might be spending a lot 
here, and then maybe not so much for the rest of the project, for example. Total funds are required, and those are included in the cost baseline plus the management reserves, as we saw, and funding requirements may include the sources of the funding. So where is the funding coming from? Now we've got project documents updates as well, and cost estimates will need to be updated. The project schedule may need to be updated, so if we can't get resources at a certain point in time, maybe that needs to be extended, for example. Uh, and of course, any risks associated with the cost do need to be updated as well. And those are all the details for determining the budget within the project management body of knowledge.